Today we celebrate the obligatory memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, Virgin and Doctor of the Church, and I'll say some words about her at the homily time. Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent, who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to, to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue official sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors, and exalted the people during the sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Cana, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Forever I will.
will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. That my hand may be always with him and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled. The one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. So Jesus' language there, I tell you these things before they happen so that you can believe that I am, perhaps in your, uh, your daily devotional books with this reading, you'll see I am is capitalized. I and am, all capital letters. That's the editor's way of letting us know that Jesus' words there were intended to re, uh, refer to the name of God himself when God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush in Exodus 3, who shall I say sent me? Moses says, and God says, tell him, I am sent you. I am sent you. So, so Jesus letting us know very clearly he's God. So St. Catherine of Siena was born in about 1347. She enjoyed visions uh, from an early age, lived a life of penance. Visions don't make one a saint necessarily. It's the it's a heroic virtue that makes one a saint. And these visions were a part of her life. And part of that journey, since she was uh, young, she became a third order Dominican. And because of her reputation for holiness, had a group of people form around her. She traveled to Avignon when she was just about 28 years old, where Pope Gregory XI was residing to negotiate peace between the Pope and the people of 
Florence. While there, she pleaded with the Pope to return to Rome, which he did. So it's an amazing, politically, what she did at that age and the power she had because of her holiness. So after the death of Gregory and the election of Pope Urban, then there was an anti-pope, and again, she went to Rome and worked the church through that. She's most known for her works called the Dialogues. She writes her conversations with uh, the Lord. And I'm going to read a sec, just a short snippet of the Dialogues. She died at the age of 33, uh, and she was canonized and then declared a doctor of the church because of her, her writings. And she's actually a patroness of Europe now as well. So this is a feast in Europe rather than just an obligatory memorial like we have. So here's uh, St. Catherine, a section of the dialogues that speak of her thirst for the Lord and the way he satisfies that thirst. Uh, eternal God, eternal Trinity, you have made the blood of Christ so precious through his sharing in your divine nature. You are a mystery as deep as the sea. The more I search, the more I find. And the more I find, the more I search for you. But I can never be satisfied what I receive will ever leave me desiring more. When you fill my soul, I have an even greater hunger, and I grow more famished for your light. I desire above all to see you, the true light, as you really are. I have tasted and seen the depth of your mystery and the beauty of your creation with the light of my understanding. I have clothed myself with your likeness and have seen what I shall be. Eternal Father, you have given me a share in your power and the wisdom that Christ claims as his own. And your Holy Spirit has given me the desire to love you. You are my creator, eternal trinity, and I am your creature. You have made of me a new creation in the blood of your Son. And I know that you are moved with love at the beauty of your creation, for you have enlightened me. Eternal Trinity, Godhead, mystery deep as the sea, you could give me no greater gift than the gift of yourself. For you are a fire ever burning and never consumed, which itself consumes all the selfish love that fills my being. Yes, you are a fire that takes away the coldness, illuminates the mind with its light, and causes me to know your truth. By this light reflected as it were in a mirror, I recognize that you are the highest good, one we can neither comprehend nor fathom. And I know that you are beauty and wisdom itself, the food of angels, you gave yourself to man in the fire of your love. You are the garment which covers our nakedness. And in our hunger, you say, you are a satisfying food. For you are sweetness, and in you there is no taste of bitterness, O triune God. Now we stand off our petitions to our Heavenly Father for the people of God that we may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. For all those in positions of earthly power, that the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history toward justice. We pray to the Lord. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstance, that God give them the grace and strength to endure and overcome, we pray to the Lord. For all who are gathered here, 
that Christ in the Eucharist continue to transform us for his work in the world. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, including all of our family members and friends, and though our parishioners who have funerals tomorrow, Raymond, Lowry, and uh, Christina Gonzalez, and for all the faithful who've gone before us, that they rejoice in the presence of God for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers, joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist, to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy 
therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Alleluia.
Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord and give him thanks. Salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, daro bulfer Ah. Uh. 